Hello everyone and welcome back to Divide and Conquer for Third Age Total War. And today, um, last time we talked about Redoom, but you might also notice for the astute of eye and quick of uh, note, we're on, on turn 40, not turn 30 where we left off last time. That is because I have skipped forward 10 turns where all I did was move Pan Herald Grain and the army that I had taken Buzzardoom, except for Nar and the Labourers, back up north. We built some more buildings everywhere. So we've been slowly kind of building up our economy and we've also prepared a slight military force to prepare to attack the people of Angmar. So for us, we've done very little, but in the wider world, quite a few things are different. Firstly, the chief of the Dunedain, Aragorn, is now dead. Secondly, the um, Anduin have declared a truce with Gundabad. Erebor has been besieged by Dale. The people of Gondor are now against the people of Rohan. Isengard is joined against Enedwife, and Enedwife has pushed out against Dunlan. As you can see here, they have even taken Dunyard and have started making their most elite troops from the Enedwife Guild Hall, because apparently they claimed all of Enedwife at some point, or they've just started building the building, and have gotten their best troops, the Guardians of Enedwife, and a very scary unit at that. Units like that will help turn the tide up for Enedwife against both Isengard and Dunland. And also a quick look at diplomacy, you can see, yep, Gondor's at war with all their all their neighbours. Dolanroth are allied to Harad, and only at war with Gondor. The Dunedain have allied with our allies, so they are currently off the table for um, victims of war. But they've also declared war upon Brig, as we already knew, and Dunland. So our High Elven allies are likely to help out the Dunedain by taking by fighting against Brie and Dunland, which I'm fine with. It gives the High Elves something to focus on other than the um, the goblins of Moria, which have been pushing out quite substantially. Because if we see a little bit around here, Dorthol, which is the region of Bachaleg, has a full stack of units inside of it. However, you, the areas around the Hidden Valley are actually owned by goblins, including here. And you can see here, Latash, what had did fall, like I predicted, to the, uh, the mountain folk of Gundabad. And they have a full stack in there, so Angmar is now ripe for the taking. An incredibly powerful faction that's soon to be brought low. And we're also currently building up the mining network inside Foreign's Halls, so we're about to get a massive cash inflow from there, and we're about to build the mines in Buzzradoom, which give us an extra 755 base income. You can't, you can't deny, that's some good cash. And our diplomats have been moving around, getting trade rights and map information with every faction they have come into to, um, encounter. So overall, we have done... Again, very little in that 10 turns. I knew this was this was going to happen. The second we took Buzz of Doom, unless we'd expanded the entire army and then built up our forces anew in the north, we were not going to have any conflict for 10 turns. And that would have been about up to 40 minutes of basically no content. And i kind of already done that, <laughs> quite literally, with the last three um, episodes. Well... Episode 1 and Episode 3. Episode 2 had a bit of battles, battles in the centre. But we want I wanted to get some uh, more battles um, wrought out against Angmar. And now now I believe is the perfect time. It's turn 40. The Barracks event is 20 turns around the corner. In which case, in which, which will then get our more elite troops. And every other faction will too also get their more elite troops. So the war can truly begin. Because I find fighting in the early game, before the barracks event, is pointless. Dale is under siege. And yep. War declared between Moria and Anduin. That's a problem for Anduin. And Erebor likes us. Good. That's why I like to keep it for now. My friend's close, my enemy's closer. Oh, you are a very um, unique looking orc. Or orc in your case. Else you'd like to oh, Isengard is bankrupt. I'm just going to ask for 500 then. You should be able to accept that, right? Yeah. You're not that bankrupt. 
That is all. Very well. And yeah, though we're not making much money right now, all of that will change. Oh, I want to take Barquetta. Well, if I if if necessary, as long as it, as long as they're not getting Barquetta, I don't really care. And the rest of the army move out to join with Grain. And also, we have two new generals. One that one was the. Um, Tamundaham noble unit we were creating, and he has been moved to the Hanvall, meet Bofa, who is the steward of foreign halls. And next we have a candidate, uh, well, an adoptee, Carlin, which we put into Gehuzenar. So now all of our settlements, other than Perth and Lund, has a general inside of them, generating extra income, population growth, and etc. Free upkeep. Now then. Anar, you've met with the Witch King of Angmar. Ooh. We should fear him indeed. Now from Mordor, I can steal quite a bit of money from them. Wow, they do not even accept that. Oh well. If they don't want to give me money, then I will have to live with that. We're currently building ballista makers in Fahangafol. And look how cheap that port is in Foreign's Halls. 2,000 coin and takes only 3 turns. And the money you make from it isn't that bad either. But also, the Great Roads. This is the next building we want in Foreign's Halls. Because once we get build the mining network, we should have our income increase to around 4,000, if not even more. And then with the Great Roads, let's have a quick look at trade from 1141 to 1613. That's an extra 500. And that's not including any other uh, in income increases. It only takes 6 turns and costs 6,000. Yeah, by the time the bribe spent occurs, we will have gained all our money back from the Great Roads and making even more from it. Now, I am taking a bit of a risk of having Buzz with Doom very lightly defended. But Enadwyf is in two very, um, very difficult wars, so they are not in the position to um, complain. Or meet the Lorian diplomats, Sadron. Oh, well. Grain will soon move out. We will, we will want another general to actually ha accompany us as a second army. Because we don't have all our troops in a single army. That That is a mistake I've made several times in the past. I do not want to be making it again. I want these Ered Lewin pikemen on the front line as well. Let's end the turn. So the mine should now be built in Buzzwa Doom. We'll soon see how much money we're now gaining from that. So Angmar, are you finding them to claim Barketa after 41 turns of discipline? Ointment and only claiming for your lost in the West. Or will you continue to feel disappointment as you fail once again to come close to the standard that you I have set you to? Yeah or nay? Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, as I mentioned last time, turn times have been going a little bit quick, a little bit slower because, um, unlike in normal campaigns where only some factions are doing something, every faction is now currently at war with someone. Everyone is moving. There's a lot of stuff going on everywhere, which is what we need to be aware of. So they finally claim Barquetta. They do not even. They, I think they're just gonna. I think they're gonna hold it off. They're gonna hold it off until the last second, and then the garrison is going to attack again, and they're gonna lose. That's my feeling on the matter. Bayonne's Halls is besieged immediately. Things are not looking good for our allies. Not allies, our, um, the peoples of Anduin. Kazadum and Anduin Vale have declared an alliance. Should be very beneficial for both of them. And now Buzzard Doom from 400 to 1000. Oh, yes. Look at that money. We're only just um, cutting even because we've got more units being made. And Bree has finally taken a the region of again the province of Agenya. whatever region might whatever uh, town might be, reside within there i do not know yet but we should be careful with, an, with another neighbor comes another potential enemy and i think Bree might not like us very much because we're allied to the high elves who are currently um at war with one of their allies the dunadine Oh, 
Oh, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, I hate when that happens. Hillman versus very weakened troops. I think they're going to beat them. I think they're finally going to beat them. Which is fine. I think it's about time they take the hill, the hills of, of Avendin. And it's time we merge our armies together. In fact, no, put you into the forts. That'll make us a lot of money for a few turns as we move up for Fudigost in two more turns. And soon I can start also recruiting siege equipment from Foreign's Halls and then also from Fahangafol in one turn. Although I think it has a couple turns um, delay. Um, any more troops I could get? I don't want to get the Firebeard Warriors. They're effective against armor, yes, but they have no shield, and not having a shield and not having a pike is not very good against Angmar. Because, yeah, their armor is very little. Their strength mainly comes from their defense skill and shields. We want archers or just any ranged units to deal with our foes. Can we get any more merchants? Yes, we can. Let's get those merchant cavalry. Every unit of merchant cavalry is worthwhile. Captain Orn, you've joined the fight. Well done, my friend. You've chosen the right cause. Now the question is, who do we send out? Carlin, how much money are you making us at Gahuzanar? 200. And how much money are you making for us, Bofa, at the Hangerfall? 300. Okay, yeah, both Bofa is better in, um, in a city. Mainly because he's a steward. So we're going to have a unit of um, dwarven labourers take over Gehuzanar's garrison. And we're going to have Carlin move forward. Yes, they're technically the same when it comes to... Um, actually, no, he's got slightly better acumen and loyalty. And there's a worse off um, commander. So yeah, Carlin is... Well, should be very valuable to us. Give these five beards inside for now. And in fact, we haven't seen the Dwarven Ring script yet. I think because of the, Sh the Shattered Alliances, um, because of, of that fact, I believe they cut off some scripts. And I believe this might be one of those scripts. I'm not sure. I am not quite sure. I don't remember when the script first occurs. It should have occurred by now. I feel like it should have. Well, we're about to find out, and I've got to move my diplomat again and actually talk to um, Lorian and Rohan. That kicks me in the arse a little, but I will endure. Okay, more things to talk about. Um, that Helm's Deep Extended Edition map, custom map I did a few days ago. Well, um, got, brought, got brought out a few days ago. Um, played on the Adine mod. It is... It is possible. But... You have to kind of cheese it a bit. And I don't like cheesing... Um, Battle for Middle Earth too much. Because the AI is quite balanced. It's the fact that it's... One, Isengard. So siege equipment galore. Two, fully upgraded troops all the time. And... It's not as fun as when you do it on Age of the Ring. It really isn't. It is not as fun because you're so you're, you're so restricted in everything you do, which in some games is fine, but in Battle for Middle Earth, when you're restricted to, into a set into an actual like fortress, and you don't have that many defensive slots, or you're fighting against massive armies. Okay, the Dunedain and Umbria are no longer at war. That is good. That is very good. That means we're not going to get. Dragged into any wars either. The hunger fall now is a ballista maker, and let's get those ballista. They are cheap and they are worth it. They are cheap and they are worth it, and that's why I wanted to build them in for hunger fall okay. because they are. They you, they recruit every every, every, uh, the, the, every unit recruits better and faster when recruited from a, a cit citadel, and they fail to take Barquetta again. What is wrong with you people? Actually, no, you didn't even lose. You just gave up. I think I know why. Because we decided to come say hello. Okay, let's get our units ready for moving out. Pikemen. One more unit of pikemen over there. but They won't show up until we've already taken Fuyrost. 
Nullisher. And you at the very back. Labourers. Scouts. And travellers. And then keep the merchant militia inside. The merchant cavalry even inside. Because they will be able to reach... Yeah, they should be able to reach next turn. And if not, it's not that important because cavalry isn't necessary in a siege battle. This siege battle will be... Um, it won't be a small siege battle. It will be a, um, a decent sized siege battle. And we're cutting from them. Um, their wargs and... We're cutting from them a very good place of, recruit, of uh, their recruitment. And then, Carlin will take some units from Grain. And then move... Probably move down into Bar... Uh, uh, no. No. Keep away from Dunedine. Not that they it's not that they hate us, it's just that I'd rather not um, make potential enemies when I can avoid it. We do want to just make more troops, but labourers aren't quite worth it. I don't want to make five beards yet. Again, if I can avoid it. Let's get that heirloom militia over here. And next turn we're going to be building uh, those mines we've built up in foreign halls. That's good. Buzz of Doom, you're building the Ironmonger so you can retrain your... And even make more labourers, which is okay. Perth and Lon. Eventually, we might get the mines when we're just when we've got more than enough money to pay for it. But right now, it's not worth it. Same with the mining network at Fahamgafal. Without the Stoneworkers Guildhouse, it is not worth the cost. Yep. Save the rest of the money and move diplomats. And now, having to go through the tumultuous te uh, terrain that is Mordor. Speak to the Loring diplomat because one, it's a diplomat. So they're more um, likely to accept deals, I think. You hold us at an honor and a pleasure. Yes, yeah, they like us more. That's good. And we got more money. Let's continue. Okay, the time of, econo of economic power is over. The time has come for military might to prevail over all. We will take Fuirost first as a warning to all peoples of Angmar that still dare walk upon this earth. We are coming for them. And then all orcs of the mountain should fear our names. The firebears and broadbeams of Ered Lewin have returned to Middle Earth, and they are not afraid to die to reclaim their lost ter their lost homes. So it is written. So it is done. That quote make a bit make a slightly more sense with um, Warhammer dwarfs because of their great book of grudges. Oh, they bring more troops in. Good, more meat to the slaughter. Let them come. They will all burn together. Let's see what new forces they're bringing towards us. Oh, it's those guys. Or oh, just more of those guys. Or not. Somehow just move them around to make it look like they're out now. Okay, the Ardenaim have finally moved into action and have gone to war with Harad and Principality of Don Amroth. The High Elves have declared themselves an ally to the Brelanders. And everyone loves us. Great. As long as everyone loves us, that is a good, good thing. Also, now that the High Elves have declared themselves allies to so many different factions, if these two declare war on each other again, the High Elves have to choose a side. Although, to be fair, we are gr slowly becoming the um, the might of the West. The Western Doomtide. Oh, look at that mining complex. Look at that money. But look at that. 4,060 coin in our per in our purses. Buzz with Doom, I do want those dirt paths, but I also want to build the, tr the great roads at foreign halls. Because that money is nothing to scoff at. And we've got really good population growth right now. If we were to go all the way down, we would have 4% population growth a turn. 
but we would also be losing 500, so, you know. You know what, let's get the port at Forens Halls. I have a feeling we're not going to get the um, the ring script to occur because of the fact we're not playing on the normal version of the game, which is fine, which is fine. I mean, I did kind of um, sculpture this around the fact that we could make elven units. But to be fair, it was only one elven unit, and it meant we could upgrade our ports once. Like, yeah, I guess that's cool. We get to get, we get to make el uh, basic elven ships. But what are we going to use ships for? We the second we make ships, um, we're going to start getting quests saying blockade this port or blockade this port, and yeah, it's not worth it. We're not we're not we're not a seafaring nation. I'm not overly um, frustrated that we don't get to make uh, other building uh, 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 different units and buildings. Oh, we're just out of range. So be it. And the merchants are also at just out of range. So I will move them into here so they're hidden. Carlin, you can sit in the in the fort for a turn just to retain some income and protection for yourself. And then do we have more units at Forens Halls? Yes. Let's get the Dwarven Labourers and the Erebu militia and move them to Fuirost. We're not making that much money, but we're making enough money to make a difference. And soon we'll also have some Ballista to join in the fray. Let's get those Labourers too. Now think about it. Even though they're just Labourers, they are still troops. And yeah, economy should no longer be a problem. Because once we start fighting big battles, we will start losing more troops, which means we need to replace those troops. But in the small turns that we don't have to replace our troops, we can get big buildings upgraded and such and such. We will prepare for a great war. A war like none have ever seen before. It's almost upon us. Turn 45. Our first real war has begun. And this has probably been my slowest, one of the slowest campaigns I've ever played. Other than perhaps when I did an RR Denying campaign and I spent around 100 turns. In fact, no, that, that, this, this was back when I was back in Umbar. Where I just built up in Umbar. Never actually declared war on anyone other than Don Amroth. I took Don Amroth. I then made peace with Gondor, and then just sailed all the way up into Linden, about turn 150 with an army of Mumakil. Oh, that those were the days. They were very frightening days, but they were good. They were they, they were days. They were fun days. What they were. God, everyone likes us. They're outsta outstanding relations with ever with everyone. It's time to change that. And I'm actually going to do the first bit of cheese that Medieval Do Total War offers you. No, uh, actually... No. No, yeah, no. Yeah. Captain Makar, you stand and fight, you fool. So let's see what we're up against. Plenty of just Hillmen of Rudawa. Very weakened, but quite veteran Iron Crown Warriors and Halberdiers. Some Warg Riders, they're going to be a pest. We want to take them down immediately with the Travellers and our crossbows. Angry Marchers, not a problem. There's not that many of them. Th those Halberdiers will very quickly get cut down by our crossbows. So will the Iron Crown Warriors. And then the main army is Pikemen, Hillmen and Savages. Easy pickings for all. Attack! Attack. Now I want to try and take out as many, if not all of them, because then we won't have to actually fight in Fuirost. Because, for those that didn't know, there is a, a cheese around this where you send a small force to um, siege a settlement and then you have another army attack a small, smaller army that is close to your room, um, to that settlement. Then you, you capture prisoners by winning the battle. Those prisoners get released... And you cho you choose to release them. You don't say, oh, okay, we want we want this ransom. We're going to execute you. No, we want uh, to release you. 
And those, those release captives, they can't go into the city that they're closest to. So instead, they um, basically go right outside the city. And then you can attack attack that army again. And then, the arm, then that army from inside the city will also attack. Because the other army can't retreat any further. And then you just kill off both armies. So at the point that they lo will, will lose everything at the end. At the end of the battle, and then that's it. You won. You just took us. You just took a settlement with no real difficulty. And in fact, let's set up on this hill. Let's take a defensive position and see if they will come for us. And if not, I'll send a merchant cavalry unit as bait. Have our pikemen stretched out far. Have our militia set up on the sides. I'm not sure where the. Uh, the AR reinforcements are going to come from. I imagine from their rear. So we're going to want to set up accordingly. And let's begin. The in oh, they're coming in from our, our rear. Oh, oh, oh dear. Okay, let's do a quick reposition. And have the merchant cav charge into the first army, which has no archers, so this should be easy pickings. But then we want to prepare over here. See the army on the horizon. Any area I can take that's slightly advantageous? Yes, here. My pikeman set up here. I have one unit of the small unit of Erelu militia to sit here to reinforce the area. The other three units can stand next to it. And our archers move a little bit further back. Back here. And the labourers go to their left and behind. Okay, Cav, this is your time. Don't charge those pikemen, they will kill you. Charge the not savages, which are the hillmen in front, yes. Charge the hillmen. And in fact, I don't need all three units, so I will keep my two veteran units behind. I'll just use my brand new militia, cav my, my first merchant, cav my new merchant cavalry units. Oh, look at those beautiful units. This is why I love Angmar in um, Edain so much. Because the, the colours and the theme itself just run so... It just, it just looks so cool. You can't deny it. it, it it's not like the Black Numenorean colours, which are more black and red or gold. But a black and blue. Blue has always been my favourite colour. And Angmar has brought in what used to be a very um, okay faction. Which used mostly blacks. Into a um, a more ice cold colour. And that's all thanks to the Adine mod by the way. All the, um, the art and such so was... Um, Originally encapsulated through the Edine mod. And that's where Divine Conquer got their ideas from. Now let's keep those skirmishers. Good, those skirmishers. Keep them at an arm's length. We've charged into the enemy. They have no choice now but to want to attack us. Which is exactly what I wanted. My plan has worked. The travellers set up here, so they can shoot those skirmishers. Oh no, that's our merchant cav. <laughs> oh well, let's just have the travellers set up there anyway. All about the perfect defence. We are Ered Lewin, the dwarves of the Blue Mountains. Defence is our name, seek, and we will use it better than any other faction. As labourers sit back here, so if they charge in here, we could have these flank them. Well, they're not really that interested in attacking us. They're sending in the trash first, the hillmen. They don't really want to shoot. Those savages, though. Ooh, they're cruising for a bruising. Make sure nothing else is on skirmish mode. Good. No one fire at will. I don't want you firing at those hillmen and wasting good ammunition. We need to focus down those wild riders first. And the savages. Savages are important to kill, too. Their armor piercing does ruin our um, not 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 quite majestic, but definitely um, 
skilled on the charge cavalry. Those savages are not to be messed with. I believe seven. Yes, yeah, seven attack and a six charge. Has 13 damage on the charge. That will um, kill m these merchant cav. We do not want that. And they're actually going for the cav. So if we move them around, we can actually do a bit of a... Um, perhaps do a hammer and anvil with them. Which will kill them. It'll kill one of our troop units. But it'll kill off their unit too. Are they moving forward? They are not. Let's see if this will provoke them. This might arouse them. Oh yeah, make sure you're all on guard stance too. Other than the cab, cab can go off guard stance. I need you chasing down units. You can't be doing that if you're just sitting back doing nothing. I uh, don't like that I can't go in without those cavalry coming after us. Anyway, let's charge in. To their hillmen that have just walked blindly into our, into our Evid Lewin militia. They stand no chance. Their stats are around, like, what, 3-3? Free, free? Oh, 5 free. Oh, they got some upgrades. They got some upgrades. Those savages, though, going down very nicely. Keep moving through. You take a slightly uh, longer detour. They're already routed. That's perfect. Stand your ground, Erid Loon Militia. Reform the unit. Have the cavalry pick, clean up the mess. 153 and they're already routing. Oh, such a disappointment, Angmar. I wanted a challenge. Now have those savages char get charged in the back by our other unit of merchant cavalry. And then when they try to turn around, we then strike them in the back. This is what happens when you don't use a general, people. Always have a general. I've said it so many times in previous... Um, oh, careful, careful, careful. Don't get hit, don't get hit, don't get hit. Just run through them. Don't need to actually attack them, just run through them and you'll get, they'll get captured. Now hit them in the back. Go on. Perfect charge. Uh, kind of perfect. But they're not routing, so maybe fall back. Nope, they're routing. They're about to route. They're about to route. Bring them down. Bring them down. Oh, the units are coming in. Crap, 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 crap. We're ready here. Have these four go a little bit. More into the sense that they're on the hill. Make sure those wog skirmishers get shot down. Because they are nasty with those javelins. Do not let them get close enough to do any da any real damage. And the pikemen over there can also get hunted out, cut, uh, cut down by the travellers. Uh, the broad beams hit them, but not the normal scouts. The scouts are not good at... Um, with accuracy, so we'll end up killing more of our own than we will of them. Scouts hit the raiders. They're, they're going to hit from a further range, so they're more viable to kill by crossbow fire. They walk, The skir skirmishers walked into our pikemen. The last mistake they will ever make. Oh, and that's even their general. Oh, kill him off. Kill him. Kill him. Go on, kill him. Oh, he's already fled, fleeing, and he got cut down. Uh, kill those raiders, because they're going to be a pain if we let, let them shoot us. Have our travellers shoot down the pikemen, because we do not want our cavalry going into them. The only unit our, ca uh, pike, our cavalry can't deal with. The Iron Crown units are com coming in. Let's have our broad beams shoot down the halberdiers, and the... Another unit of scouts shooting down the Iron Crown Warriors and another on the archers. The other unit of Wargs gone. We have no more opposition on the archer front. The Angry Marchers are good, but not quite good enough. I'm afraid. You are not quite good enough. Hillman, Hillman, Hillman. No, not worth it. Don't waste the Angry units like that. Actually, you can. Uh, no, don't. They're charging into pikemen. They don't stand a chance. They've lost their general, so they're already going to have morale penalties. We just need to uh, run into them. 
with our cavalry now and they will start routing guaranteed in fact they should start routing the second they come in to us watch this their charge failed and already they know what it means to know fear make sure those pikemen get a good dose of crossbow bolt so do those pikemen they need to be peppered down so do those savage oh no not the savages not savages not savages Let's move our cavalry around instead. Try and make the savages go in the direction we want them to go. We want them to stay away from the front line because that's where they're strongest. So we're going to keep them away from the front line as much as possible. While well, the pikemen are just trying to get into position, they're failing. And our cavalry can start preparing to mosey its way round into the back line of our enemy and then bring them down into a ferocious rout. Stubbornness of the dwarves. Give them no quarter. Charge into them. You guys do the same. Move around to prepare to charge into them. Shoot them. Uh, charge into those archers. They will fall. Stop shooting for now, archers. You've done your job diligently but now it is time for our cavalry to do the rest of the mopping up oh the archers already regret not going further into the front line the fools had no chance trying to the back of the infantry those halberdiers are a match for us but they all obviously made one mistake they moved away from the front line and now they are open to be shot. Strike them, my labourers. Bring them down, bring them deaf. Those frogs cannot be allowed to escape. All the numbers that come now must leave dead. No exceptions. They cannot be allowed to live. Those pikemen have suffered the, will soon suffer the same fate. Those hillmen are next. Charge back into that in Angram infantry unit. Keep away from the pikemen. Let them get shot. Let them get shot. Hillmen are routing all over. Perfect. The mass route has begun. The army loss penalty will soon be inflicted. They realise they are outnumbered outmanned and outclassed they have no chance now they fight to the death then might as well walk away charge into, charge into those throws oh even the pikemen are routing now I'll make sure all our archers stop shooting now this is where the cavalry do their job which is give us an easy win Mop up crew, do your duty. For king and country. Make sure none live. And if they do, they don't get back to this their precious city. 600 captured. 700 captured. How many will be captured before the end? 90%. 766, 77. 777. We lost 115 men. Well, we still have 2,000 left in the pocket. And they had an army that was comparable to ours in size. But nowhere near as great in skill. Our Erloon Militia took the most of the, took the brunt of the damage there. But it did heal 12. But our Erloon Pikemen here did also suffer a few casualties. Which is fine as we're soon going to be recovering. And we soon get a new unit. And our new Merchant Cav unit did lose 12, but we did get three back. So not a bad start at all. Not a bad start at all to the First War. What must we do next? We must keep moving. We cannot divide and conquer now. We must keep charging forward. There's only one direction we must go. To hell, and we do not look back. Let's look at the glorious, I believe, either Numenorian or 
Elven. I feel like these are Numenorean ships. From the fact there's a crown there. Yeah, this has, this this, 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 has to, this has to be these seven Numenorean ships. Or oh, actually, what are those pillars? I'm not sure what those pillars could be. Let's execute the falls. They deserve no mercy. And with that, Fuyo Lost is ours. How many people know what it means to fear? The war camp is useless to us, and so is the Hillman camp. 2,000 more co- Oh, are we only to get the Hel Elven Haven? What? Wait. Does that mean... I just need to check this for a second. Can we actually get both elite troops? I think we can. I think we're allowed to get both the Azagal Tomb Protectors and the Grimborn Reavers. Oh, ho, 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 ho. This could be fun. This could be really fun. If that, if this is what I think it means, then that means that even though the script doesn't technically go off, the dwarves of Everluin get both reward, sides of the rewards of the script. Which are, for those that don't know, if you reject the rings, you get the second level of ports, which allows you to build ships and um, Elven Ma uh, the Lindar Mariners. But if you accept the rings, or not, also you can build the Azagal Tomb Protector as your most elite um, armor piercing unit also inspires troops. You can also get the Grimborn Reavers if you accept the rings. And you get a special script that um, gives you some different regions, to, well, some certain lands to take as your own. So you, get, so you can become more powerful. But yeah, it looks like we're going to get both sides of the coin. Very intriguing indeed. And I cannot wait to do more of it. So for now, we'll keep going. No need, no need to stop yet. We're making good, good pace. We might as well keep going. <coughs> He's got a bit of a cough. Nothing too big to worry about. We should push for Gobadrine or Ang's Sword. I want to push for Gobadrine first. Because this, air, this region here, even though it has a full stack inside of it, it should currently be overwhelmed by goblins. I need my two spies to start moving forward and seeing what exactly is going on with the rest of the world. We've been so I, um, is isolated from the rest of the world. We need to know what's going on now. And we need Buzz Doom level up to a, sit a town fast. We're getting good building progression. But if Brian and Enidwife declare war on each other, or even worse, they both declare war upon me, we're in trouble. Enidwife, as you can see, is currently busy with Isengard and Dunland. They should not have any reason to declare war on us, though. Bree has no current enemies. They could go back, go back to war the Dunedain. They could go to war Dunland. Although I don't think they're currently neighbouring Dunland. But the, they're li the most likely enemy they're going to go towards is Enidwife. Because they're currently the, um, are possibly the weakest faction. And so the weakest link for them to attack. Could be wrong on that. As I said, they do have Guardians of Enidwife. They could be strong enough to be a threat. But yeah, I'm more worried about the Orcs of Gundabad. Which are... Even though they're super weak to archers... We do not have good archers. They they excel in the in melee, in the cut and thrust of battle. But let's continue. There's no time to stop yet. We must keep moving for at least another 10, 15 minutes. I want this video to be another hour long. First five videos, at least an hour long or close to an hour long, is what I want. And then after that, if the, if these videos don't uh, I don't, don't want to say this badly, but I've noticed these videos are not getting anywhere near as much attention as my Edain and Age of the Ring videos currently are. So, if by part 5, um, and, af and afterwards, after part 5, if the videos are not getting any real love, or, um, or, or just not actually um, approaching my expectation... For these kinds of videos compared to Edain and Age of the Ring, I will not abandon this campaign, but I will move over to Total War Warhammer. My final decision upon the matter. If the campaign doesn't get enough love when I'm putting in so much time and effort into it, then I might as well spend more my time more effectively by doing other campaigns.
that might get even more attention. War declared Dolwador against Dolwinian. That could be a problem for Dolwinian, because it also war with Rune. Orcs are going about hate us. Don't really care. Don't really care. We're going about things about me. So I'm fairly certain they still hate Angmar. Yeah, they do. They still hate Angmar. So they cannot say shizzle to me about being hated. Probably should have built a tower or two with Curry, Curry when I was moving in. Carlin, even. When I was moving him in. Anyway, we're going to sit here a couple of turns just to make sure I've built up towers. In fact, no, we're not going to. We're going to have the army move out for that fort and see what else is around. So there should be a region around here. Yep, Angsul. Very likely defended. And there should be another... There's obviously this region here, Gerberdrain. Also very likely defended. But Drangu the Bloody! The Orc General of uh, Mount Graham. The, com the commander of Mount Graham. With his Mount Graham ra Raiders. With the beautiful headdresses on those wargs. Ooh. We might get one more battle out of this uh, video yet. We shall see. We shall see. Right now we should definitely be focusing on... Um, having at least a little bit of... Um, of an economic buffer. We should, get those, we should definitely get those ballistas. They will help us immeasurably. Having ballista means A, you can instantly attack a settlement. The only problem with that is, if you do, you should have several siege equipment, and more important, um, more like most likely, you should have a um, a catapult. Because if you don't destroy a gate or the wall, by the time um, they run out of ammunition, you instantly lose the battle. So yeah, do be aware of that. Although, just contemplating, could that be used to cheese a map? Just by constantly losing, but but killing off more of the army than you would by just sitting there doing nothing. Probably not, no, it's not worth it. It's not worth to do something like that. That's, that's taking it on another level of um, insanity. I may be insane, but I have my limits to what I'm willing to do. Bring the Duna Dine are still happy with my existence, that's good. It means they won't come for me. This is what I need. So far, every faction is still in the game. No one has been erased yet. Although, if I was to put my money on who's going to go first, I would definitely say Angmar right now. Angmar is definitely on the first on the chopping block. Only because I'm intervening and aiding in the inevitable destruction. Next, I would say Enadwife is going to come next. There's no way I can defeat Gundabad or um, Moria yet. Kazadoom is probably not far off. Finabel's been besieged. Oh, the RR Denyme have really been moving out fast. Captain Bayezid. You got meager wealth, right? You should be happy by paying 1,100 for this map information, right? You know you wanna. Yeah, you know you wanna. Oh, look at, look, look at the movement with that ro those roads. Dear God. Dear God, they've built paved roads. Anduin and Lorien are allies. Veil of Dwinian and God Dolvador declared a truce. Literally four t two turns after declaring a, a war. Foreign Souls has got that upgrade. And look at that. That's actually 400 more income from that port. Five turns and that's going to be make, that's just going to be money um, put in our pockets. I can agree to that. Fairground, can you do something similar? Ooh, 100, 100, oh, I've already been over this, it's 209, which it makes itself in, oh, ooh. Foreign's Horse is making big amounts of money, very big amounts of money. I'm very generous, very glad that's happening. Oh, but do we save for the Haven? I think I, just, I kind of just want to make the Lindar Mariners, really. I just want to make the Mariners. So yeah, I'm going to hold on to that extra cash just to build the Mariners next turn. Yeah, say we're still making 1,500 a turn. We are really well off right now. We are really doing good. 
Carlin, can you step out the sit? There's time for a turn just to put a tower up here. We can't be too careful, can we? We can never be too careful. Now, do we take that fort? I think the army's too big, they're going to do not do anything about it. That's an extra thousand a turn. It should be more than a thousand, right? No, so I say about a thousand is right. A thousand is right. And speaking of, we should be wrapping up this video about now. So unfortunately, no, no more battles for this one. Again, just, just another single battle. But we will have more battles soon. Meager wealth. I'm going to get 1,200 out of you, Rohan. Because your, one of your regions is part of my victory conditions. My secret victory condition is to take the... Well, to take very important landmarks to the dwarves in some regard. To me, that is the Hornburg because of the Glycerin Caves. Both sides of Khazadum, all of basically all the Misty Mountains, all the way up to Erebor and the Iron Hills. I want to... Um, I don't really care about anything too far to the east. Rune can stick where it is. Stay where it is and stick it. I want to take Isengard. Because it is another... Because te technically it is part of the Misty Mountains. It's in the very southern area of the Misty Mountains. And then after that, I want to also have all the Orc Nation... Well, the two Orc Nations I'm currently... Will, I will be fighting to die. The other two Dwarven Nations to die. Which, again, I would need the regions to have... For them to actually die. I also want to have um, my ally, the High Elves, claim Karas Galathon, Karen Amroth, Frandor's Halls, um, the Elven Acres, which is Torfilin, the mountain region here, and have Dol Guldur. So I wanted to have basically every Elven landmark, other than the Felund. I, if, if I feel like this campaign can actually go the extra mile, I will have, try and take a Felund as well. But yeah, that's that's a long way away. Let's not get the Elven Haven. And let's keep moving our units forwards towards their goal. Because yeah, our army is soon going to hit full stack capacity. So I want one unit to stay in Fuiros, which will be a Dwarven Labour unit. One of the uh, this Dwarven Labour unit will sit inside Fuiros. Well, the rest of the army. Carlin will move up with one with uh, the ballista, and attempt to actually no we don't want the, we don't want the big army to attack Ang Sul. I've made that mistake before as a Dunedain. It is a mistake. I do, however, want to prepare to. Is this all the borderlands? Ooh. Yes, yeah, so I definitely want to take Gobadrine. And taking Gobadrine also means we're not neighbouring the Dunedain yet. But if we take Athilin, then we will. So what I'm going to do with the Dunedain is give gift them a fill-in. We're not technically making an alliance with them, but I want to gift them the region so that they like us a lot and they are not likely to declare war upon us. They're busy currently with Dunland, so there's a possibility that they won't declare war on us. Also, we're both allied to the same ally. But if they're to declare war on us, then Linden has the high have to make a choice, and I feel like they're going to not uh, the AI never ever ever take my side when it comes to. Um, when it comes to going to war with an ally. They never do. If I declare the war, if the enemy declares the war, I'm, I've, I've spoken enough. End the turn one more time before we call it an end to this video. We've claimed the fort of Gobadrine, and soon we'll be taking the city of Gobad the town of Gobadrine, moving into Angsul. Now our, our army remains as one. Soon it will be split off into two. It will slowly engulf what is last, what is left of Angmar outside of the chill eastern, well, the, the chill western peaks of Mount Gram and Angmar. Very, very good. Very, very good. Oh, play, play, playing this game again makes me want to go back to playing the new Northern Dunedain again. They are by far my favourite faction, just because of the um, not only because of the diversity of their rost of their um, roster with the Beacon of Hope system, but it's just because of their roster in general is so nice. And rec reclaiming Arnor, rebuilding everything from scrap, is something that I always enjoy. A long, slow, boring, drawn out kind of campaign.
which obviously doesn't really make a very com uh, compelling um, campaign on paper, but people in um, I enjoy it. Don't, don't don't really care too much if other people don't enjoy it. But I'll call it an end to the video today. So I hope you've all enjoyed. And again, if this campaign doesn't get enough attention by part five, I will consider moving this to t mo taking this slot, these slots to Total War Warhammer 2. But until then, ta-ta for now.